everybody welcome back to my channel hope you guys are all doing well this fine day this eventing day isn't it it's another eventing vlog Addy. you know exactly what it's all about as well i feel yesterday i was platting her up she's been out overnight with a lycra on which i'm very glad that i did put on because she was a bit covered this morning but thankfully i've given her a quick groom off, we'll give her a little bit more of a, well, definitely we'll give her more of a groom when we get up there. But yeah, today we are off to Launceston. Everything is already done, everything's in the car, we are hitched up, we're cleaned out, hay net filled up. But I just feel like I've shown that so many times in recent vlogs, so I thought I would just skip straight to this morning, which is nice. We are again leaving in daylight always helps when like I woke up and I was like oh it is actually daylight so that like I say it just makes it a little bit better we are again doing the B90 but I haven't looked at any course pictures we're doing the same dressage test as we did at Port Elliot I will be seeing it for the first time when I'm up there with you guys so let's get you loaded that's what I was coming down to get you it's time to pop you in the trailer and then thankfully it's not very far away only I say this and everyone's always like, whoa, that's still quite a way. Uh, it's about an hour and a quarter, hour and a half. Um, we are picking up Christopher on the way. Um, I've just given him his phone call to make sure that he is up. And then mum is also driving up. Carrie ann is up there. Tina's up there. Tina's doing her first event of the year. Bound to be lots of familiar Cornish faces up there, which I'm excited to see. Oh, we're having a stretch. Stretching up. Hey, is that nice? So yeah, can't wait to again see everybody, see all the eventing community, hopefully in much nicer weather than Port Elliot, not very windy conditions. I'm just doing my last little scout around, but I feel like I have done this quite a few times. So fingers crossed, I have got everything. And uh, let's get you in the trailer and get on the road. We have arrived at Launceston. It's already looking rather busy. Addy is very answer pants. Does she know where she is? <laughs> Kira's stomping. She's like, let me out. Hello. We are here. Are you okay? Hey. That was a nice drive up. Oh, don't scratch the flats. <laughs> and we have got little Miss Nala in the back. We have also got a very tired Christopher too. He has just slept the whole way up. But he's loving it. There we go. Hi, puppy. Coming to the course. Daddy's not coming, but you're going to come, aren't you? Wee! <laughs> She's in. <laughs> 50 p and you this morning. You're funny. Hello, right. Put my wellies on because the grass is looking rather long. And then we'll get out and see what we have got on the course to walk. As I say, I have not looked at anything, so this is completely fresh. But we have arrived in time good time i was aiming to be here for quarter past eight and i believe it is about 10 past so doing well already this morning it was actually a really nice drive up although we did have quite a bit of rain that hopefully we won't see any more of for the rest of the day now i did do launston i believe last year i'm saying this and i'm doubting myself but no i'm sure i did it was one of addy's first ever events and i've just noticed that they're actually running it slightly differently coming out of here i feel like the start box is usually on the other side but it is in fact oh wee wee's is in fact this side and then going out over that log there so as always going into the start box starting my app and then i get out of course it's a nice first fence nice and inviting nice log for going through the gateway and across where the car park is. I like it when they park us here as well. Yes, it's a long walk down to the beautifully flat dressage arenas in the rugby field, but for the cross country and the show jumping, you're just so much closer, which is a lot nicer. Um, otherwise, sometimes they park you down near the rugby pitch, which obviously you're close for the dressage, but then your other two phases is quite a walk up and back. Um, more feeling for the people that are watching, to be honest, walking up and back. Not necessarily Addy and I, but like mum and Chris and all and having to walk down there but right let's get the phone out get the app on just had a little look on the board or the window over there and the optimum time today is four minutes 50 so I've already popped that into my app as I mentioned this is looking a very nice inviting first fence sharing it with the 80 but I am orange carrots for anybody who doesn't know fence number two again another nice 
inviting fence but just got to be wary that you are going past the lorry park and quite often people will stand along that white rope so just make sure that she is concentrating and focusing on the fence and not getting distracted by things on the sideline. And now heading down through another gateway and I feel like I can already view oh yeah we got a log pile for fence three and fence three nice lots of space around it so just make sure that we're nicely in the middle of that one and then I think we are going off to the right again as I'm just coming through that gateway is just to make sure ooh, that was a bit up and down there um be conscious of that as well when I'm riding it it's like a bit of like waves in the ground just to be conscious that when she comes through is obviously like into a big open field so just need to make sure that she again is listening concentrating as Cam would say even down both reins coming through jumping over that and then there is like a mode track giving us the line to get to fence four which is looking again a nice inviting abstract kind of vlog oh and there is my beeper for my first minute so I ideally probably want to be landed over fence three and then hearing my first minute um, always want to try and be a little bit up of it so you've got time in case anything was to go wrong okay right let's have a look at this fence it's almost making you want to jump like you want to jump it straight to go here but actually that's not making you straight for that and i think you would be better off ever so like nala nala's like yeah we go down like that <laughs> um Come here, sit down, sit. I think you want to almost be coming this at a very slight angle just so that you are on your straight line rather than, yeah, doing a weird wiggle, jumping this one straight to then turn for that one. So I shall be aiming just ever so slight angles to make sure in my warm up that I am jumping some fences on an angle. But yeah, that's looking good. I feel like they've changed what that jump is down at B. So let's go have a little closer look. They've just added a little log so that you can clearly see nice, sound there for landing on yeah nice nice just lots of leg be conscious again in case it is becoming sunny and coming into there would be looking a bit dark but i'm not sure nala oh no she's gonna run through the water and she's got the lead just hanging off of her too late <laughs> oh dear my hand is about to get mucky and wet Oh, Poppy. Right, so this is fence five, so we want to make sure that we go through there. And then I can see that we are going up and to the right for our six. So that is where we've got to just be conscious of how we are going through the water. We've actually got a lovely long amount. We've actually got quite a lot of time, actually, before getting to fence six. So that's nice. Nice skinny roll top. Up and over that one. Again, balls, photo, views. You've got a rail ditch rail, but actually it's not. It's a rail ditch wishing well, which we jumped at Port Elliot. But first of all, focusing on 7A. Nice. And then we've got quite a few strides before getting it to what I know is going to be a ditch. But Addy will not know that until we get closer. Nice ditch for B, which Nile is going to beautifully demonstrate. Yay! Over that and onward up to fence eight. And Z wishing well, which is nice. We jumped one of those at Port Elliot, so happy with that. Um, I'm just not quite sure which way we are going now, whether we're meant to be going down that way or going that way. Might have to be doing some erasing in a minute on my, <laughs> on my course walk. Um, but hopefully we'll see one. Oh, there's a red flag on that. This is when I probably should look at the course before walking it and I didn't actually pay attention to that. That's naughty. Nope, I was correct. We are going this way. So we've got that log coming through there, which is nice. It's no other alternative way of going down there, is there? You've got to get over that log, but just got to make sure that I go nice and wide after the wishing well so that that isn't like a sharp right hand turn so that she doesn't know that it's there. But it looks nice. Looking very nice. Oh, look at the state of that dog. <laughs> Are you loving life? Yeah, I'm glad I put wellies on. Always no Launceston. Go through river. Oh, that's good high. Go through rivers. I have bought spare socks. <laughs> In case it does go too deep. 
but it's okay, no, sorry. We are through, and our fence is up and around. Out there, so number 10. Oh, that one's quite a beefy one, but I think we'll jump nice with the brush. Got a nice ground line. Just treat it as a nice roll top. Nice. Couple of rails, 11A, on to a corner, but on a nice straight line. Just jump that nice and straight. Just watching where I had come from, fence 10, because actually I think I want to be on that wider path that you can see has been cut to come down there. Um, maybe cut across from one to the other so that I can get a better straight line. So onto that straight line and then just keep both legs on, even down both reins to fence. 11B. Fence 12 is looking nice. Oh, that was very nice posing there, Nala. Um, just a nice straightforward, I don't even know what you call that, but again, I just kind of call everything like a glorified roll top, but obviously not to be disrespected, but it's just a nice fence after you've had a combination. If you go through that previous combination and you're like, oh, I need to like gather yourself up and you've had a bit of a dodgy jump that's a nice fence then to just try and regain a little bit of confidence before coming down to what I know is the next fence which is a tricana Addy jumped the 81 here last year again I know that it's got a good ground line which we will obviously see in a second and it's got a nice it's it's clear what it is to jump it and they're not it's more of a rider scarer because they're not going to see it see the ditch until it's too late I'm again as course walking and this was Sarah Thorne who told me this when I was walking badminton with like when I was riding it with Spritey is always look back at your previous fence look at where you've walked is that where you're going to ride and ensure that you have walked the correct line so obviously I can see my fence is the one in the middle and then coming down and as I said this has got a lovely ground line nice top rail so just focus on that look at that and actually it's got quite a nice bit of grass in there that they we wouldn't even really consider that as a ditch, I don't think. Um, but that was the one that Addy jumped last year, so just stepping it up a little bit to jump this one. And fly over that towards the end of this field. Cars are just getting into place before they start the cross country. But it was just interesting, so they have actually mowed like a line down there to get you to your fence 14, but actually I think I'm gonna, the moment we're over the tracana is to head more into the field, because then I think you'll get a straighter line for longer to go to fence 14 as opposed to going where they've sort of been mowing maybe it's where they've been driving the trucks and stuff but it just looks like it's a bit of a way path but actually if you come on that you're only going to have like a stride straight two strides straight so i'm going to come out more into the field and then like i say you can get a straighter line for longer to fence 14 because you have then got to do a bit of a sharp left hand turn again down through a water crossing this is actually, fun fact for you, each time you're going through the river, you are going from Cornwall to Devon. You are, we are right on the border. I haven't taken a photo of that fence, bear with. I was too busy giving you my fun fact. Oh good, I raised a little bit on the course and have added the fence picture. I like to take the pictures for myself because I like to visualise it before going out on the cross country. So that's why I carry on and I take the photos and I do the course walk. Nice soggy, wet, grassy lead. Nice. Okay, and then it, so this bit is a little bit windy. So we have gone through the water and out, and then straight away we are presented with fence 15. So again, come out the water, hang a right, stay right, and then come around, and then we can get a nice shot for this fence. Again, we have just come through a gateway and we are presented with all of these fences, which is quite distracting, things to look at. Um, and we're in a big, again, open space after being a bit confined, going in and out of the water. So just got to, again, make sure that she is listening. We've got a nice line through this gateway, almost hugging that tree, but not spooking at it or having a bite out of it. That's what Addy more likely to do. And then onto fence 16, a nice hay cut, which we've jumped quite a few of these now. So should pop over that and then we are on the homeward straight. Now, as we're on the homeward stretch, I actually feel like this could be one of the longest periods between fences. So, which is nice because you can, you can slow down a bit, slow down your rhythm if you think you are a bit quick or, and that's where the app comes in handy because you can look at that and see what sort of timing you should be here. Also that you've got time that you could kick on and open them up a little bit. I feel Addy, 
Oh, there's another minute mark. I'm guessing that's going to be four minutes. Yeah, it's four minutes. I've seen three. Duh. Um, it's not going to be two minutes to get back from here. I think because I set Addy up so much for fences, well, attempt to, that actually takes a lot of time. Um, so I need to, I, I like to set her up and I am going to continue to do that. But that's where perhaps a course like this, where you have got it a bit windy, I've just got to be conscious of the clock if I am going for the time um, and just be aware of that so I would like that's gone four minutes actually I think I probably want to be out of this field before it goes four minutes so I know that I've got a comfortable amount of time I think we've still got a combination to go um, but we shall have a little look ski but this is fence 17 over that one nice one that's usually like a fence three um, when they run it the other way it's quite nice the way that they're running it today I like it it's it's flowing and it's it's good and we've got a bit of challenges in there but let's carry on to the final couple of fields. It's like the gateways, the water crossings, that even though they're not technically an element or like a fence that we've got to jump, those moments all just take off like a couple, of, I say a couple of seconds, might not even be that, but by the time you've counted how many gateways you've gone through, how many water crossings, that actually could add up to say 10 seconds and I could be 10 seconds over the optimum time. So it's all things like that that you've just got to take into consideration when walking the course. Apologies, I feel like this is actually going to be quite a blabby start, but this is what I tend to do when I first get to an event is I head out and I walk the cross country and I just thought I would do it a little bit differently. So yeah, I just thought I would talk you through what I think when I am walking the course and walking up to it. And actually, it's really good for me to sort of be saying it out loud. It's funny, always helping it cement into my brain. But on to this final one. This is a bit of a different fence, but nice two brushes, which actually something like this is I look at and I'm like, oh, I'm excited to give this a go. They're like the badminton brushes that you get, but the way that they're getting you to jump them is just to go to the point of each of them so I think you've just got to stay a nice straight line I am going to walk it just for my own brain but I will just be coming in on a rhythm so we'll be landing one two one two three four one two three four one two three four one two yeah nice so a nice three strides um, and like I say that is again just making sure that you stay dead straight they are individually numbered 18 and 19 so you can do a circle if you perhaps get a really odd jump over the fence one you could shout not presenting do a circle come in and jump the second um but i think that is challenging you and i will be taking the challenge to ride down through that dead straight before jumping the final fence in the final field and the final fence that is obviously not the end of my course walk because i have to walk all the way to the finish flags to stop my app from recording because obviously these are all seconds so it's whether we're coming through here in a steady canter put lots of pats or we're coming through here kicking on and we need to get to the time <laughs> um we didn't obviously make the time and i think that's what's making me conscious of it more because we didn't make it at port elliot but port elliot is a completely different course lots more hills whereas launceston is a lot flatter but as previously mentioned earlier is a lot more windy and a lot more going on oh and that's five minutes so I've obviously walked the course quite rather long so we'll see how it adjusts the minute markers in a second when I stop the app I really did jinx it earlier it's absolutely peeing it down I took Addy out I brushed out a tail got rid of a poo stain that I didn't realize was on at the back this side um I don't know whether that's actually might be from the bar um so I've just cleaned that off you're tucking into that I think I'm going to attempt to do her front studs while she's in the box I am well within time but just would have been nicer i've got a platter tail do studs and just tuck her up basically and give her a groom but she's now wet so i forgot to bring a waterproof rug which i did just cook for my mum but she's already on the road doesn't matter um i mean we're going to be wet regardless aren't we so there's no need to worry about doing quarter markers because well i might be able to a bum might be so wet that i'll be able to put them straight into that but Offered you a drink, so I put this on this side. Would that? Would you prefer that? Hey, you took it into that, aren't you? You're a good girl. I took the light grow off. You like dry one side, but a bit wet on the other, aren't you? But I've put her back in, so she's in and out of the rain. Like I say, and we'll give the studs a go in the box. Never done it before, but I know it is doable. So let's give it a go. She only has one stud in each hoof, so it does make it. A bit easier 
Um, but yeah, welcome again to eventing in August. Yay! <laughs> I like sunny weather, please. We are ready to rumble. How very, not disorganised, but just very odd doing everything in a different order, getting dressed first, then doing half the studs. But all studs are now in. We're tacked up. Addy's had a karma, if you cannot tell. Obviously, lights her ears being played with. <laughs> Gone to sleep. I'm all dressed, just got to pop my number on and then head on over. So as I said, it's a bit of a walk down to the dressage arenas. Um, but I'm going to aim to get on in literally a few minutes, head on down and start to go in front of the judges. Thankfully it has now come out sunny, but it's now come out quite warm. It's literally gone from one extreme to the other, but it's alright, I'm not complaining, it's not raining. Touch wood that it stays remaining that way. I want to be daring, baby, dance the night away, I let my head down if I want. To just get tired chasing fame and being pretty all the time Doesn't sound like fun You can do better Let me show you what a good time looks like You can do better So much better If I want Let yourself be free And maybe you will find That there is more to life Than being pretty Honey, let's just face it You can do better Let me show you what a good time looks like you can As previously mentioned We're riding the same test that we did at Port Elliot Which is the B90 Dressage Test 95 Now a huge improvement for Addy Was that she came across from the warm-up area And trotted around the arena really confidently Like she was comfortable leaving that area And not spooky at the white boards Or distracted by anything She was just like, okay, I know what is going on We're going in and doing our thing inside the white boards We got a 7 from the judge for our center line saying fairly straight and then a 7.5 for across that diagonal which i think is really rewarding because addy can sometimes get upset by the change of bend the change of diagonal but she is getting so much better like she does here where we're doing two half 20 meter circles and we consistently scored sevens we're then picking up canter which i'll be honest this was a little bit lack of preparation she hollowed a little bit like the judges put, scored us a 6.5 and said a little behind the aids it was. I don't think I quite prepared her enough for that transition to let her know that Cantor was coming up. But she's got a pleasing rhythm in the 20 metre circle, scoring us a 7 and also a pleasing contact. This downward I thought was good and the judge put fairly fluent which was nice. And then we go straight on again to two half 20 metre circles which again as we did on the other rain, we scored consistently sevens. Then we have got another counter transition coming up and this one was so much better. So on the aids, I prepared her, I learned my mistake from the last one and we got rewarded with a 7.5 and a comment of better. Again, another 20 meter circle with pleasing rhythm, pleasing contact. She's not going over bent and tucking behind the vertical, which is nice. And then we come here for our downward transition, which we scored a seven. I actually think it was better than the first as well. And then this is where we start to lose some marks. We come into medium walk, you can see that she just halted slightly. So we scored a 6.5, losing straightness into the walk. And here, I almost felt like she was doing quarters in. It didn't feel very nice at all. Um, and then we go on to a stretchy half 20 meter circle. Again, scoring a 6.5, more freedom and purpose. But I'll be honest, I was a little concerned. I, I know she doesn't look it there, but don't want to ask too much because I'm worried that she might take that as a jog or to trot. Then we pick up the reins at F and that was when I felt that she definitely could have dropped. So we scored again another 6.5 and this is where we've just lost those half marks which is a shame but we know what area we need to be working on in our training. 
then picking up trot before our halt, which we were a little bit fidgety into, but we did end up square, but scored a six. And the judges' comments was pleasing partnership with promising moments, even more suppleness, especially in the walk steps to achieve the eights. But an overall score of 31.3. Happy? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Smiling. Dressage completed. I'm really, really chuffed with it. There were still moments the walk felt very wonky. I think she went to jog in the trot, uh, in the walk again. It was all in the walk today. Whether that's just where a little bit of tension was, but her trot work and her canter work and everything like that was beautiful. Really, really chuffed with it. Um, we are now back and changed, ready to go for show jumping. I'll be honest. I didn't even, I don't know why I didn't even come into my head. I probably am just trying to forget about the show jumping, but I've just been down, learnt the course, so I've got that now. Um, probably watch another one whilst I'm down there in the warm up. But Addie has had her bit changed. So changed it to a hanging cheek just so that I have a little bit more steering. We obviously put on our tendon and fetlock boots and I changed my steering to be my pink ones. Pink free jump. So there was a lot of messaging, which I thought was quite funny. Regarding last time at Port Elliot saying that my mum had bought me some rescue remedy dropper. So people were asking me what it was. Basically relax you, um, all natural, um, comfort and reassure, reassurance. Um, so yeah, I thought it, it comes in a little bottle like that. You pop on a few drops onto your tongue. Um, so I'm about to take that now ahead again of show jumping, but I am, yeah, just trying to relax about the jumping today. Just nice and smooth. Last time was a really nice round. So let's just go in there, keep our rhythm um, and see how we get on around the show jumping. I thought I would start my voiceover from the few snippets of the warm up that I've got. So you can see we've gone over the cross pole, bringing her back to a halt, giving her a pat, and then walking off as I learnt from Simon at Swipe Up Kick On. But the ground in here was not ideal. Well, the rain that we had had in the morning really hadn't helped at all, like this one. Dear of her getting over that and somehow managing to keep it up. So I just gave her loads of pats to stay confident. I then just jumped this oxer and was like, I'm done, I'm going in and just hopefully and trust that she's done enough show jumping rounds that she will remember what to do. But it wasn't the best of warm ups that I would have liked to have. Nonetheless, we got in there and over the first one, as you can see, the, it was almost like the landing and the takeoffs were the most boggy, obviously, as you can probably imagine. But this is a venting. It's a venting on grass. And this is what we have got to get used to. Now, I felt like I gathered her nicely around that corner, connected the front end with the back end. And she got a nice shot over that. But then here, just getting a little bit quick. And with that can sometimes get a bit flat. And I try so hard to sort of leave her go for the final three fences, like over to you, this is now your job, but it does, yeah, can feel a little bit wild. We got a lovely two stride through this double, which was nice, but did mean that we landed disunited. She changed in front, but I just was like, I've got to ride the rhythm. I haven't got enough time to change her canter lead. So just had to go with it, but she pinged over that one. And then around this corner, I didn't get her back enough and that meant we got very close to that one kind of gave me a bit of a moment to go i need to reset this so brought her back to trot picked up canter reconnected the front end with the back end for the final couple of fences she gave this one a bit more air because i think of the fillers and then was quite gun ho but was keen and knew that she had the planks to jump for a lovely clear round oh well done emily that's a clear round hey just did a little fist pump behind the camera. <laughs> Considering, like don't get me wrong, I'm buzzing that we went clear. I just felt like we were a little bit, um, gone ho a little bit, but that probably felt worse than it looked, but it no, was very good. Definitely contained it very well, darling. Thank you. Just considering she, we didn't do any of the warm up how I would have planned to do it. No, it's so like heavy in there as well, every jump, like taking off. Have to, they have it's to like put in a double generate, effort, like extra effort, 100%. Just to get over the thing, so yeah. to be fair. But she was awesome, really pleased, just. They just said there's not many clears. So. Is there not? I can't, it doesn't surprise me with that ground. No, sure. Smashed it. Did mum get to watch? Yeah. Hmm. We are ready to rock and roll. I did get on. I did walk over there and then got told that it's about half an hour wait. So I thought, you know what? I'm not standing on her back over there all that time. 
So I brought it back. Thankfully, it's literally just over the other side of this head, so it's not very far for me to go. But I brought her back. She can carry on happily munching. And then I've just walked over and put my number down manually. And yeah, it is about, I think it's about 42 minutes until I would be on. Um, so I will go over there in about half an hour, which probably by now is about 20 minutes. But it's just not worth it to be stood over there. Um, but I did get to see Tina going out the start box and through the finish line, looking very, very happy and Banksy loving life. So that was nice to watch. Apparently it is deep out there, which is to be expected with all the rain like we had even just this morning. Um, and I know from the show jumping, but just gonna make sure that I keep her nice and straight, set her up for each fence. I have visualized my course so many times. Um, really trying hard to not listen to the commentator, if I'm honest. And just gonna go out there and give it our best shot. Poor Elliot was very boggy as well. So I know that she was used to that ground there. Um, but just make sure I set her up. She reads every fence and I am there supporting her, encouraging her to get over them all, which I'm sure you're gonna love and you're gonna know. You know the flags now, don't you? And you're gonna fly over all of them. Because you're awesome. You are. Addy warmed up very well. Here we are just popping the final fence before we headed to the start box, which I'll be honest, when she came out, she veered back to the warm up. I was like, no, no, we've got to go this way. That's very cool. quickly recovered. She clocked the fence and pinged over fence one. Now I haven't actually got much of the cross country, so apologies, but a huge thank you to everyone who has sent me through some snippets. Here we are going over fence two, which Addy just literally took in her stride was game on for all these fences especially this one at number 10 that beefy one that I was a bit like oh that is quite big we then as I said stayed to the outside of this mode track got our line admittedly I probably could have slowed down ever so slightly more but we did get a lovely stride to that corner and as I say Addy was just so game on and every time we landed was like well where's the next one where are we going now mum and we got another lovely shot over this one then it's near the end of the course, the second to last fence, which you can see, and I've put this in again, because what an absolute legend, as you probably hear me shout. She was an absolute star through this. We, it was soft on landing. She pecked a little bit, but still got lovely three strides, knew that there was another fence, and I just tried to stay as balanced as I could not to get in her way. And then over the final log, which we have got there from another angle as well. And loads of pats. I was well within the time. Lots of pats and just an epic round. Buzzing, buzzing, buzzing. My horse was absolutely epic and a little cross country machine. She ate it up, didn't need to be. I was honestly feeling so sick. I don't know whether it was because of the hanging around. I was trying so hard not to listen to the commentator, but I was feeling rather, rather sick before going. But once, I got the countdown, we went out the start box and got a few under about us then like relaxing into it and enjoying it and she ate it up. Um, I feel like gave the majority of them all a lot of air. Um, a couple of times just a bit pecked on landing just because I think it was softer, maybe I was a little bit too forward but that is me being really like picky. Um, but obviously main priority was Addy so she is all washed off. Um, I need to get the studs out, I've just grabbed some of the ice cool gel to put on her legs because it has been tough on that well i put it on anyway but it's been even more tough on their legs today but something that was asked in lots of vlogs recently and i've had so many messages about is this wonderful con contraption is that the right word um this is my water boy is what it's called there was a label on here but it's been here for a fair few years um it gets charged up by that so that just goes off of the mains charges it up and then you've got an on and off switch to give you a level of how much water you've got. Fill it up at the top. And then I have got my gun. Oh, mum's about to... It's not turned on, so you can't get me, all right? <laughs> but I like your I'm thinking. I like your thinking. <laughs> it's not champagne, it's just water. Um, 
So that is how I then get the pressurised water for washing off, which I left it go for a fair few years of not working. And now I'm like, why did I not? Because it's always been there. Um, but it's fantastic, absolutely love it. I'm not 100% sure whether Waterboy does actually make them or not anymore. Apologies if they don't. Just gonna pop this on her leggies and then get her studs out and her tail pat as well. So let's grab the tray while she's eating. Chris is very kindly holding her for me because she is just scoffing down food, but it's very well deserved. Um, so yeah, go I can't do all of this in one more hands. There we go. <laughs> Lights in just some feed, refueler, nice bit of sloppy chaff, <laughs> which she'll be very happy about. Ooh. Thanks, Bellany. Here you go. There you go. Yummy, yummy. Oh, I know you will like it. Yeah. Yummy, yummy. Probably just let it just soak a little bit, but it's not actually, it's only conditioning keeps. Um, Right, now to pack all the stuff away. Nice. Oh, nom, nom. This is really bad, but this is actually my first thing that I've had. Sorry, I've just let you go, dog. I'll stand on your knees. Oh. Pizza! <laughs> mm. Not for you, puppy dog. Mm. That's good pizza. I feel like you just want to fold it and have me in like a sandwich. Like a sandwich, mm. or like a calzone. Oh, you're right, a calzone. <laughs> home, sweet home. Oh, it's nice to get. You leave in daylight and home in daylight. Actually, I don't think this is a good idea because Friday has got the run of it. She can come in and out as she pleases, but I don't think I'm going to be able to do this one-handed. So bear with. I will be back once Addy has gone out in the field. Hello, you said hi. Can you tell Spritey what you did today? You see, I was a very good girl. Don't get your hands <laughs> That's silly. Right, let's get this down. Let's get you out. That's a priority, isn't it? Yes. There we go. Pony back out in the field. And on a holiday, actually. She has now got a little, little mini break. I'll be honest, it was going to be a longer break, but actually it's only going to be a week now because of Chillington. As I think I've previously mentioned, Port Elliot did give us a regional final qualification, as did today. So I thought we've, we've got to go for it. We're just going to go there for the experience. But I was planning to give her two weeks off, but I've now just gone for a week. And then hopefully she, shouldn't, well, she won't lose any fitness from that. And then I'll be able to have her back in work for a couple of weeks work a bit more on the dressage, a bit more jumping, and then head off to Chillington. But oh my goodness, what a day. I am absolutely, I just said, I've just seen dad at the end of the lane. I'm like, I think I've driven home the whole way like a Cheshire cat, like with a massive grin on my face. She was blinking epic today. And I mean, she has been, for the past few events that I've done, she has been epic. Her attitude and all of that has been spot on. But today I just really felt her click with all the phases Cross country, I, I the time of not going out for like half an hour really did get me a little bit worried. I'm going to take a little pew here, but this isn't going to be long because I feel like I have already blabbed a lot in this vlog. Some of you I know love it. Some of you perhaps not so much. Um, but yes, she was just so game on for that cross country. Once we got out into like the second field past the lorry park and out over the stick pile at three and then down that drop bit I was like yeah we're game on she's game she knew she was keen like for every fence she was like that one and I'm like yep there was only one where I was a bit like no Addy we're not going off that way we're going this way for the ditch that was I think seven a and b she just jumped a and then like landed and that's what I've been working on is stopping her after the fences to try and regain that control bring her back together again and it's just moments like that that I'm glad the ditch wasn't closer because I think it then could have been a little bit more of a squiffy jump. It might not have actually been that bad, but I think in the split second that that stride out that way feels isn't quite 
probably doesn't look as bad as what it felt. That's what I'm basically trying to say. But we got a beautiful rosette. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful. Can't wait to get home and write on the back of that. Do you guys still write on the back? I think I've asked this before, but do you write on the back of your rosettes where you've been, what the score was, who was on, the date? Um, I love doing it. I have done ever since I've had Sprite tea. Um, just so that when I look at them and I look on the back, I, it brings it straight back to my memory. But yeah, comment below if you guys do that too. But lovely rosette. I'll be honest, a little disappointed there was no prize giving. Um, and I understand why they don't do it because not everybody is able to be there all at one particular time, especially people who've got multiple rides. But it just doesn't feel quite so nice when you just walk up and you go, oh, I'm number 26 and I'm second in my section and then they give you a rosette. But anyhow, um, I like the judges comments I think they were really fair and actually I believe Leslie told me and I'm not 100% sure if this is fully correct um but we were actually lying fourth after dressage which for us is very very good I think being in the top five percent of the class is fantastic um and definitely not where we have been before so that was a huge improvement positive to take away then show jumping she really dug deep felt like because the ground wasn't great they almost had to give another like five centimeter effort wise to be able to clear over the fences if that makes sense but she did it she yeah really really good and I'll be honest I'm toying with the idea I didn't get to walk the course today and I don't know whether that might have helped my nerves a little bit and I just focused on having a rhythm going around focusing on that and keeping her together and watching her shoulders instead of being fixated that this is related this is four strides now I've got this fence to that fence on a dog leg and it should be this amount of strides and I wonder whether I sometimes overcomplicate it actually just keep to having a rhythm make sure she's supple and do your show jumping round. But anyways, we'll try it again and see how it goes next time. But it's been a lovely, lovely day. The sun did come out after the torrential rain that we had this morning. Huge thank you to Chris for coming along with me and mum coming up as well. Obviously, well done to Kerry ann and to Tina. It was great to see them back out. Banks looked absolutely on it in the start box, his usual keen bean self. And I think the commentator said something like going out at a great pace. And I remember thinking, I was like, I bet that's a Banksy pace, not a Tina pace. But no, they looked absolutely epic and full of smiles coming through the finish, which was lovely to see. And I'm hoping that's given Tina the bug to get back into eventing. Because it's great. You, like I've said many a times, you just can't beat that cross country feeling, the cross country buzz. It is epic and I love it. Now just to quickly unhitch, unpack all my stuff. Leave Addy out in the field, give them their dinner. Happy ponies, back out in the field. Addy's going to enjoy a week off, like I said. Um, hopefully Sprite's not going to have the week off because she did come in yesterday with a little bit of a bit of a gash on her leg. I think it's just superficial. Um, it looks like swelling has gone down already today, so fingers crossed that doesn't hinder her for being able to be ridden this week. Otherwise, I'm really not going to have any ponies to ride. But it was a great day. I hope you guys have enjoyed coming along with us too. It's been a great weekend for all the VE squad, the VE squad. Um, I spoke to Lucy on the way home. She's had a brilliant day as well. Meg did well yesterday. Obviously Tina's done well today and so have I. So it's nice that, yeah, we're all coming back and all celebrating good weekends, basically. It's been fab. Yeah, like I say, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Please do like this video if you have. Leave a comment below, maybe your favorite part. What phase did you think Addy did the best? And of course, hit that all important subscribe button if you don't already. And I will see you guys all very, very soon. Bye. I'm gonna continue being a Cheshire cat for the rest of the evening now. <laughs> go back and watch all the footage.